whenever you are ready. My name is David Morales, and I will be talking about the benefits of bilingualism. Um, since migration has existed, uh, many immigrants have had children in different parts of the country. And most of those children grew up to be bilingual. Uh, bilingual bilingualism is often viewed as something uh, unusual but uh, extraordinary. And uh, most of bilinguals have a second language that is uh, not English, or a first language that is not English, and uh, another culture that is not uh, usual to the Americans. Uh, usually their uh, their talent is viewed, they view their own talent as normal, but what is the, what is important about being bilingual? How can bilingualism be beneficial to cognitive development, social interaction, and literacy skills? Um, Learning a new language or attempting to learn a new language uh, can change the brain in uh, many different ways. Uh, for example, uh, Krista byers Heinlein, she's a professor at the University of Concordia, uh, studied a group of bilingual children doing tasks along uh, their monolingual peers. Bilinguals had an easier transition in, uh, to doing another task than their monolingual peers. Uh, Another uh, point that I could uh, stress here is that uh, teens that go through middle school and high school usually have uh, lower stress levels. That is because uh, their brain is uh, evolved to have or is pressured to mature earlier. And another point I could also have is that it sets back cognitive diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and BDD. Uh, pervasive development disorders. Um, Dolsky, Megan Dolsky, a staff reporter at the Toronto Star, uh, states that bilinguals have low stress levels because of their brain is pressured and that also sets back the cognitive diseases. Uh, Dolsky also makes known that bilingual makes, makes these uh, cognitive diseases appear five to ten uh, years later or uh, yeah later than usual the usual people. Um, social interaction is also one of the main points. Being bilingual has its uh, setbacks. Most people most bilinguals have an accent to the English language and um, they're usually stereotyped. Uh, people can be harassed for not being able to speak English right uh, but but they can speak another foreign language that is that they can speak perfectly fine. But even with the setbacks, it is beneficial to real world problems and uh, jobs. Uh, for example, Flex is an electronic management company. Uh, they they make all types of engines for cars, for for motors, for uh, lawnmowers, and and parts for phones. So they're all around a part for everything. Uh, also. And also have another company named Z. It's a power management company. So we say elect electricity. They both offer high playing uh, placements for people that speak second languages. But um, they don't just offer their services here in the United States. They offer their services in all around the world. Uh, for example, Mexico. Uh, they have a bunch of companies in Mexico and they also offer really high paying jobs for people that can speak English or just another language. Uh, literacy skills. Uh, bilinguals know less vocabulary in both languages. Um, bilingualism allows you to know less but more at the same time. A monolingual can know 100 words in the language they know, but a bilingual can know 50 words in one language and 50 words in the other one. So even though they know less vocabulary in both in both languages. They can uh, they, they their brain has evolved to push and to learn more. Um, they're they have accelerated learning due to their well due to their brain being able to mature early. One of the limitations that I have for cognitive is uh, the cognitive benefits uh, of learning a language. It's the same thing as playing Simon Says. So 
if you really want to get uh, benefits from from learning the language, is is you're better off playing as Simon uh, Simon says. Uh, a social limitation is that kids and adults face embarrassment or even harassment from their from their monolingual peers because of their social disorders. Uh, social problems can cause very a lot of uh, isolation and not and distract people from important things that happen throughout their life. Dr. Vitarika Marna, a professor, author, psychologist, psycholinguistic scientist from Northern University, explains that bilingual people with this social disorders face problems with interaction with peers and can lead to distraction and isolation. Uh, so this, this isolation and distraction can also lead to uh, having um, those cognitive diseases which is which is really, really uh, not, but not beneficial for both cognitive and social uh, social solutions. Uh, literacy limitation is less lexical knowledge. Judy Foreman, a medicine lecturer at Harvard University, states that bilinguals have a hard time differentiating objects in both languages. Uh, spelling out words in one language uh, can be interfered by the second language, and that can cause confusion and their brain can go uh, into, a, into a blank state at the moment. Uh, but cognitive solutions also have, a, well, I also have cognitive solutions. Uh, playing mind games in, is different from playing kid or playground games. Uh, playing mind games with the language that the person is learning could help and could uh, greatly impact the brain. Uh, it helps uh, people with the memory recognition and creates new knowledge over the one that is already existing in their brain. Uh, social solutions could be learning an endangered language that could help out with cognitive benefits, and uh, but also get involved with the endangered community. So uh, even though you have social social problems or social diseases, uh, most uh, there's a lot of languages around the world that are being endangered, and um, and that does not help out with the cognitive benefits, but it also gives you involved in a community so you don't feel alone or you don't get isolated. Uh, Russ Reimer, a Russ Reimer, a author, freelancer, uh, he states that um, learning these endangered languages means immersing oneself into character and concepts of the culture. So. Um, this helps out with the uh, social diseases that a person can face being a body. And a literacy solution. Uh, uh, taking free free second language classes could uh, also help. Uh, most most community colleges around the, around the United States, they give out free classes for people that want to learn second languages. But if you're still in school, most schools give out um, Second language programs, so that you can learn more more lexical knowledge at the same time. Uh, in conclusion, bilingualism has its uh, limitations and obstacles, but with personal will and resources at hand, uh, obstacles can be turned out. Thank you. Um, what information did you need that you were not able to find or locate? Um, I was I was able to find a uh, the language uh, or yeah the link but people that are bilingual and their grades compared to the people that have monolinguals. So I was looking for a graph that had compared both of them uh, in different years of since uh, immigrants came to the United States. Okay. How was your conclusion in conversation with the body of literature or other research sources that you examined? Um, so most of uh, most of my sources depicted how cognitive and, and literacy uh, is affected in a, in a beneficial way. Uh, the only problem was that social the social perspective was the one that has uh, had two ideas, so I had to merge them into one and. Uh, and the, uh, the the two ideas were really were really uh, really hard to merge because they had uh, the conclusion came 
their conclusion came out to be opposite of what I was trying to convey. But uh, in the end, I tried to just go with one, and that's how I came out to a conclusion. All right, good job. All right, Brooklyn, you're going to be up next. 